Praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty heavens. Praise him for his acts of power. Praise him for his surpassing greatness. Praise him with the sounding of the trumpet. Praise him with the harp and lyre. Praise him with the timbrel and dancing. Praise him with the strings and pipe. Praise him with the clash of cymbals. Praise him with resounding cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Psalm 150. Over my 13 years at Capitol Church, I've heard after a time of worship, again and again, the question asked. Gaze upon the stage. Tara, tell me, who is she? <coughs> And then that person says, pointing at the she, someday I really want to be her, that tambourine lady. Karen is that lady's name, and she's been around, well, forever. And when the lights go down and the music goes up, Karen throws her head back and she starts to do her thing. Her wrist twitching and twisting, her instrument a silvery half moon sparkling, clanging jingling, making a joyful tinny noise that rises above all the singing. But why do people want to be her? Why do they see, what do they see in her that they want to be? They say it's an unabandonment in her ways. It's a freedom she plays on that stage. It's a freedom in her body to praise. Praise the Lord, Psalm 150 says, as it begins, and then praise him all the way through. Praise him in everywhere you are. Praise him for everything he's done. Praise him with music, everyone. Praise the Lord in and for and with, says the poem that ends the whole book within which is a collection of five sections that first spoke to God's people Israel and looks at how to pray and praise as those faithful to the rules of the Torah, anticipating their messianic king, waiting for the deliverance that their obedience to the laws of Moses might bring. But the Psalms instruct that keeping what the Torah can teach arrives at obedience, yes, but that's not the whole point of what the Psalms preach. The Psalms sing that a life surrendered becomes one of external accolade. Such an obedient life ends up arriving at the freedom of unencumbered praise. The Old Testament testifies, multiplies into adoration. It leans forward, pressed, Toward expectation. We do too, even though we are covenanted new, and our pride arrived in the person of Jesus Christ, God in the flesh, and his son's sacrifice. Connected forever, forsaken never. While we still wait for him to come again these days, the Psalms teach us like them to praise. Praise him in everywhere we are. Praise him for everything he's done. Praise him with music, everyone. Woven through the book, we are reminded through its authors that God's mercy is just. Many of the Psalms are tunes we can sing to build but the 150th lyric of praise comes after most of the 149 songs before it offer an authentic dose of the shards of sharp torment and trouble that write the real reality of our humanity. Pages of short and long songs littered with dripping lament. Angry words at an invisible God pierced through that original parchment that spoke to the pain of then and still give brave, empathetic voice to the pain of now. Work and 
well and worthiness, depression and death and darkness, hunger and hurts and loneliness, relationships that are broken and feel hopeless. These things are allowed in the Psalms to weep. Those pages cut and they bleed. The struggles of the heart and the mind and the soul are allowed to be seen and they're given room to breathe and to grieve. The severity of the expressions of hardship are matched though with an intensity for worship. In number 150, the word praise repeats in my NAV, NIV, 13 times. The word praise translates halal, which is to boast or to shine. The first verse and the last translate hallelujah, to flash forth light. Hallelujah points to yah, where dark becomes bright. Hallelujah means praise yah. Way. That is the Lord our God, to whom, even after all the things, we still direct our awe. As a child that went to Catholic Church, I remember that we sang Hallelujah, Hallelujah, Hallelujah. I remember in those pews an awareness of my sin. I remember the priest and repentance, and I remember the box of confession. I understood that God was out there somewhere and that I needed to apologize. And it's true that I still need his grace, and every day there's a million reasons why. But I didn't know then that my little voice prayed, my little voice praised as it sang hallelujah in the church sanctuary on all those Sundays. Verse 1 tells us to praise him and moves on with some synthetic parallelism. Praise God in his sanctuary, praise him in his mighty heavens. Praise God in our temples, the four walls in which we gather to pray, and in this temple that we walk around in every day, and praise him in the heavenly realm where he also reigns. It's strange to think that heaven is already our home, but we recognize it as we yearn for it when we feel our bodies groan. Heaven is where without the distractions of life, will fully worship God on his throne. But the psalm says, start now, here on this broken earth, where we declare who God is, what our divine king is worth. Living in the temporal, already knowing what's eternal, the voices of heaven and earth join together, because Yahweh rules over all things forever. Verse 2 gives a simple and short nod to why and what we praise him for. It says, praise him for his acts of power, for his surpassing greatness. Praise him for his immense magnificence. Even for the marriage that failed. Even for the painful betrayal even for the child he won't create, even for the child whose will won't break. For even if we do all the things, when life turns out to not be what we were expecting, we praise him. For all the things under creation, for the things <coughs> that don't make sense in our brains, but is still his provision. For his mighty goodness, her greatness, we offer our utmost thanks to his highness. We praise him, and everywhere we are, we praise him for everything he's done. We praise him with music, everyone. As someone 
who loves words, I get bugged when I can't find the ones that are right. When letters won't string together and the limitations of language make it impossible to write. But God gave us another way to say what sometimes can't be said. He gave us music. He gave us noise. He gave us tools we can use instead that communicate more than words ever could in a way that can even be better understood. Verses three through five describe a host of different sounds once and still used to hallelujah, a trumpet or the horn of an animal with which there's announcing or signaling a harp and a lyre, stringed instruments played with powerful plucking. The timbrel or that tambourine is clanging and it's jingling, the cymbals clashing, resounding, echoing, all saying without words, it's time for some acclaiming. And then there's this tool, the psalm says, for dancing. Recently, I sat in the office of a doctor, feeling not right in my head, unsettled, shaky, anxious, just wanting to stay in bed. She took some blood, asked a lot of questions, and said, when was the last time you danced? I'm like, all I could do was to give her a sideways glance. But she said, I'm serious. I want you to give it a try. She said, just once in a while, I want you to dance. And I don't care why. So the next day, I thought of Karen and her unencumbered praise. Dancing in the temple for the things he's done with her instrument and body in front of everyone. And I thought of this song that I knew would end up speaking to me in unexpected ways because that's what God's word does. No matter how many times it's read, it reveals itself, himself, yourself, mornings, nights, and days. This time around, it has said to me, dance to the Lord your God, no matter your circumstance. Last spring in Jerusalem, I stood the wailing wall. I watched the sky bleed purple on a Friday as a crush of people rushed up against it to pray. Some pressed up against the retaining wall of what was once the temple sanctuary. Some moved in these dancing buoyant circles, chanting desperately. Some were standing in a constant sway, murmuring their words. of art, all in this kind of rhythmic rock. I stood back and I took it in, a sight like I had never seen. The birds that circled above, the creatures that scampered below, and all the people in between. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord or make some noise to the divine. People wrote prayers on these tiny bits of paper and pushed them into the wall's cracks. Millions of hearts crying out to God on those little scraps. Acting in confession and declaration in expectation for the coming restoration and redemption. We praise him and everywhere. We, whose grace was given, not earned, have faith too. In the middle of our story, Christ arrived, died, is risen, and Christ will come again. May the Lord, the God of Israel, be blessed forever.